okay. So I think we will begin. And today, as I was explaining in the previous talk, we've been going through all four Brahma Viharas in our little training. Loving kindness, compassion, joy, and radiant calm. And last talk, we started exploring the Satipatthanas, the four resting places of awareness. And these are simply a way of explaining that the Buddha used uh, to explain what he called wise awareness or Samma Sati. And it is for us to uh, understand and practice, to understand that these four aspects of uh, our experience, our awareness, um, happen naturally. They are already there. They are already happening. And that is the body, knowing the body as body, knowing sensations as sensations, knowing mind as mind, and knowing mental states as mental states. Or that is also Dhamma, knowing Dhamma as Dhamma, how things work, without, without putting our opinion on it or a judgment or criticizing the experience and looking at reality like the Buddha said, uh, yata bhutang, as it is. And to do so, we practice also wise practice, wise effort. That is, to let go of tensions and distractions when they arise, to smile and to relax, and to let the mind rest again onto either one of these four resting places. And they all happen naturally. We don't have to do much about it. And so tonight... Uh, since we did the body as body, resting awareness upon body, knowing it as only body. Last session, today we will explore a little bit more the sensations. But we will also begin, uh, as we usually begin, uh, with uh, relaxing into our own body awareness. And so um, we will begin with the meditation and then later I will be giving a talk on the Bhikkhu Pasaya, the Bhikkhuni's residence where Ananda, uh, the Buddha explains uh, how to practice with these four Satipatthanas with joy and with uh, uh, using uh, using them skillfully. And so I invite you to take a comfortable position and relax. Let go of any tension that might have arisen for you during the day. Let go, relax, and smile. Joy is a very important contributing factor of awareness. Therefore, it's important to feel at ease, to feel comfortable. 
It's always better to have body upright, ujungkayang. Like the Buddha said. But also to be comfortable. Meditation is supposed to be a pleasant abiding here and now. Sukhi Vihari. And whatever is in your mind right now, simply allow it to unwind. Maybe there was some things that you were planning or something that you were relishing from the past or looking back. Maybe it was a person, an event, a situation. Just let it all go. And notice how good it feels just to do that. To take a step back. Relax. Release any tension. and smile And you might notice that as you calm down, all of the activities in the body and the activities in the mind are also calming down. and smile. All of these layers of layers and layers of tension and perhaps stress that we've been holding on to, perhaps fairly unconsciously, begin to unravel.
And as you calm down, you might notice that you start becoming quite aware of your whole body. And you don't have to do anything particular about it. It simply is. And as we calm down, we allow the mind to simply rest upon this clearer and clearer awareness of body with a smile. because it feels good. It is supposed to feel good. So many ways, so many times the Buddha said that this meditation is happy, it is pleasant. I also call this happy body. When tension is released, dukkha is released. This is the third noble truth. And the release from dukkha is nothing but happiness, sukkha. The Buddha, in fact, taught to indulge in this kind of pleasure. The happiness of mental clarity, of mental development, bhavana. Because it is completely blameless. And this is how the mind becomes collected.
If there are any distractions that arise, simply not holding on to them, letting them go, releasing them, relaxing any tension that arises with the distraction. and to smile and relax into this naturally occurring awareness of your own body. With a smile. Another way of seeing this is to calm down, to pacify any kind of activities that are happening within the body and within the mind any processes, any tensions. Pasambayang. To tranquilize them. To calm down. to bring them to an end. And to smile. Perhaps you might notice that the awareness of your body is mainly all kinds of sensations. And everything that arises in the mind also comes as all kinds of sensations, whether they are grosser or more 
subtle sensations are sensations arising then passing away appearing then disappearing whether it's a pleasant sensation whether it's a unpleasant sensation whether it's a neutral sensation the practice is the same we let go smile relax and we do not hold on to the pleasant sensations we accept them when they come we smile push away the unpleasant we do not become angry or start having an opinion and criticizing the unpleasant experiences we notice them for what they are and we relax we let go and we return to the smile not holding like sitting at the back of a car watching the road trailing behind, being left behind, left behind, left behind, continually, not holding, not grasping, smiling and relaxing. everything just sensations passing away passing away passing away Perhaps the quality of collectedness becomes more significant slowly. The mind is starting to gather on itself. And one is be- becoming aware of that experience. Very good.
just like laying down in a shallow river. And having the water just flowing, flowing all over your body. Continually passing. Similarly, whatever sensation is arising for you, the most important is to not cling, to let go, smile, relax. Why clinging? The moment we think we grasp it, it's already gone. We simply let go. and enjoy the bliss of Viveka. Mental detachment. Mental solitude. and collectedness. And this is the same in everything that we do. This is sitting meditation now but in actual life, it is also the same practice. We get to go deeper sitting. But this is a life practice. To cultivate wisdom. to remain in wholesome happiness of mental collectedness, of mental development. And to understand everything that we experience as simply as it is, as it is happening. And therefore not becoming agitated, frustrated, or overexcited, where we lose our mindfulness and start making
misguided decisions, misleading actions, And so for the f last few minutes of this meditation, you can bring up the feeling of loving kindness inside your heart. This warm, radiant feeling that you feel for perhaps your children or someone you really love and respect or perhaps for all of life and allow it to infuse your whole body to suffuse your whole body and smile and allowing your love to shine in all of the universe in all of space like the sun without forcing too much just allowing And of course, remembering that this is an all the time practice. Whether we are sitting or whether we're doing everything that we do in life, to remember not to take things too seriously, all these things that are arising and passing away. Remembering to let go and to smile, to take a step back. To always remain in wisdom and to check our intention. Remembering to discern or to know if we are within wholesome states or unwholesome states. Are we with love and compassion, joy, letting go, contentment, and making that the intention And the virtues will help us remain within that intention, not to kill, not to steal, not to lie. They will uplift our minds very easily. and protected by our own virtues and having a livelihood that is blameless that is good and good meaning 
for all living beings but good for our own minds they come together then we can easily take on the mental development the training in the higher mind and this is a wonderful sutta explaining a little bit more about meditation and a very fundamental aspect of it and the fundamental aspect of how the mind works and how the mind becomes collected through joy and letting go. Where all the seven supports of awakening, awareness, discernment, inspiration, joy, tranquility, collectedness, and steadiness of mind all come together, all line up together and support each other. The Buddha said they are like the roof of a peaked house, all, all the rafters of a peaked roof which are supporting, all leaning towards the center beam. They are all leaning to Nibbana, to liberation. And this is the bhikkhuni's residence. And the Venerable Ananda here is going to visit the bhikkhuni's residence, the nun's residence, that are nearby. And the nuns approach him and pay loving respect and say, Bhante Ananda, many nuns meditating with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness are experiencing wonderful progress. Nananda replies, So it is, sisters, so it is. Indeed, sisters, whoever, monk or nun, meditates with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness, it can be expected that they will experience wonderful progress. Then the Venerable Ananda taught the Dhamma to the nuns, having taught, sparked, uplifted, and gladdened them. He stood from his seat and left. And in the afternoon, having walked in Sawati for alms, the Venerable Ananda approached the awakened one, paid loving respect, and told him all that had happened to him in the morning. And the Buddha replied, So it is, Ananda, so it is. Indeed, Ananda, whosoever, monk or nun, meditating with a mind well settled in the four resting places of awareness, it can be expected that they will experience wonderful progress. What are the four? And he, here the Buddha is explaining two ways of meditating which are a bit this meditation process in two steps and one is by application by directing the mind and the other one is by being unapplied by unapplying the mind not applying not directing the mind with objects or thinking and we begin here with development by application or directing the mind how to skillfully direct the mind here ananda one meditates aware of body as body intent fully aware and present letting go of tension and distractions as one meditates aware of body as body resting awareness upon body bodily discomfort might arise one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly this is usually fairly familiar to all meditators then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object and by doing so gladness arises 
Now here is the sequence that is very important that is called Dhamma Samadhi or natural collectedness. And this is um, Pasada here, this uplifting object is also, it can be interpreted in a few ways, but mainly it is an inspiring object, a calming recollection, which it can be, uh, it can be a lot of things, but mainly if we keep it really simple, this can be only a smile. <laughs> From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected naturally. And this is the sequence that is very important for us to understand in meditation how the mind becomes collected through joy and letting go. Afterwards, one reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. Now this gladness has arisen, the mind has been uplifted. And when the mind is uplifted, it is aware, it is present naturally. And it becomes calm and collected as we cultivate this and whenever this uh, uplifting recollection maybe it's someone that you love somewhere in nature or something then the purpose is fulfilled the intention is fulfilled and one can let it go one then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagines and one knows, not thinking nor imagining, I am happy, present, inwardly. And here you can notice that these two uh, words, thinking and imagining or thinking and reflection, are the two first factors of the two factors of the first jhana, the first state of meditation. And as we calm down, there will be still thinking. The mind is uh, it is detached from outside distractions. It is letting go of all these unwholesome states like restlessness, anger. Once these states go, there might still be thinking and imagining vitaka and vichara. But these will be purified. They will be happy. They will be joyful. And so there will not be any impatience or anger at that point. It is impossible. Then that means we are not in the meditation. But with the joy uh, and the letting go of all distractions, then there might be some residual thinking or imagination. imagination. And that is also directing the mind. It can be directed or it can be simply residual, which is simply means it is simply happening. We're not really making that happening, but uh, there is some thinking still, but it is wholesome, not heavy. Not thinking nor imagining, I am happy, present, inwardly. Now sensations as sensations. On another occasion, one meditates aware of sensations as sensations, intent, fully aware and present, letting go of tension and distractions. As one meditates aware of sensations as sensations, resting awareness upon sensations, bodily discomfort arises, one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly. Then one should apply it to an uplifting object. By doing so, gladness arises. From gladness comes joy. 
joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected, naturally. And what is wonderful about this sutta is that it really does explain very clearly the beginning process of meditation. The very getting into the first level of meditation and then the second and how that works. And it does not go further much. It simply explains these two steps very clearly. Afterwards, one reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention was fulfilled. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine, or one, and one knows, not thinking nor imagining, I am happy, present, inwardly. And see here, the word happy comes back pretty often. On another occasion, one meditates aware of mind as mind, intent fully aware and present, letting go of tension and distractions. As one meditates aware of mind as mind, resting awareness upon mind, bodily discomfort arise, or one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly. Then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. By doing so, gladness arises. From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected naturally. Afterwards, one reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention has been fulfilled. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine, and one knows, without thinking or imagining, I am happy, present inwardly. On another occasion, one meditates aware of mental states as mental states, intent, fully aware and present, letting go of tension and distractions. As one meditates aware of mental states as mental states, Resting awareness upon mental states. Bodily discomfort arises. One's awareness becomes dull or distracted outwardly. Then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. By doing so, gladness arises. From that gladness comes joy, joyful in mind. One's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness, and a happy mind becomes collected naturally. Afterwards, one reflects, this is the reason why I have applied my mind. My intention has been fulfilled. I can now let it go. One then lets it go and neither thinks nor imagine and knows. Without thinking nor imagining, I am happy present inwardly. This is how there is development by application, Ananda. And how is there development without application? See, now we talked about the first step where there is vitaka and vichara. We direct the mind to wholesome state that uplifts the mind and calms it down at the same time. But once this is done, we can let go of that object because it becomes a disturbance in itself if we try to hold on to it further. One does not apply one's mind outwardly. One understands mind. my mind is not applied outwardly. It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after. Meditating, aware of body as body, intent, fully aware and present, I am happy. One does not apply one's mind outwardly. One understands, my mind is not applied outwardly. This simply means to an object, to a particular thought or reflection. That is the outwardly here. It is simply resting on itself collected. 
It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied, before and after. Meditating aware of sensations as sensations. Intent fully aware and present, I am happy. One does not ha apply one's mind outwardly. One understands my mind is not applied outwardly. It is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after. And see here, this loops back to what the Buddha called Apamana Samadhi, unlimited Samadhi. A Samadhi that does not constrict or grasp at any particular object, but it is completely measureless, unlimited. One understands my mind is not applied outwardly, it is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after. Meditating aware of mind as mind, intent, fully aware and present. I am happy. One does not apply one's mind outwardly, one understands. My mind is not applied outwardly, it is unconstricted, liberated, unapplied before and after. Meditating, aware of mental states as mental states, intent, fully aware and present, I am happy. This is how there comes to be development without application or without directing the mind. Ananda, I have taught you development by application and development without application what should be done by a teacher for his students, holding their best interest at heart, out of loving compassion, that I have done for you, Ananda. There are these roots of trees, Ananda. There are these empty huts. Meditate, Ananda. Do not be neglectful, lest you become remorseful when the time has passed. This is my advice to you. This is what the Awakened One said. With an uplifted mind, the Venerable Ananda delighted in the Awakened One's words. And this is how this wonderful sutta ends. And as I mentioned earlier in this sutta, um, it is only really explaining clearly this process where we use vitaka, vichara, to uplift the mind with joy. And this is also uh, calming the body. And the Buddha in many ways, in many suttas, explained how calming the body brought up joy or relief, pamoja. And how this relief and this joy also contributes to calming the body and the mind. So it is two wings of a bird, really. And we are using them and they're... Um, contributing to each other and as we're cu cultivating these states then we're skillfully using the mind and objects in the mind to uplift the mind but then once it is uplifted we can simply let them go and become even f freer in mind and this is talking about the resting places of awareness, but this process is also completely valid for the Brahma Viharas to practice with loving kindness, compassion, joy, or calm, steadiness of mind. We can simply use this uplifting recollection, perhaps practicing loving kindness, thinking of something that brings this love in your heart, that uh, a person that you really love and respect, or maybe it's a puppy or a small animal for you, or a place in nature that you love, or maybe for some people it is a sentence, repeating a sentence. This is also in the same category of Vitaka, of a, thing, a thought. And once we use this tool to uplift the mind, then we do not have to carry it the whole way. 
then we can simply stay with the boundless feeling of love because it has been brought up and it is uh, ignited now and it is staying steady. So that was the talk tonight and I will uh, leave it open for questions if there are any from now. Namo Buddhaya. See, most of the meditation teachers these days, they suggest to take up only one object of meditation, for sitting meditation for a long time. Yes. But uh, in suttas, Buddha is giving different objects of meditation to the same uh, person for different situations. So is it okay to take different objects of meditation for sitting in different situations? Yes, yes. There are uh, some some um, subjects that are ba basically this is uh, development, really. And one of the one of the things that's happened is that it has become mostly uh, fixed, one-pointed awareness uh, practice in many cases. And this, this is causing some problems uh, sometimes because uh, it creates some rigidity. And um, where this is, in fact, there are many situations and we, in fact, we are becoming, we are training ourselves to become wiser to become uh, more aware and uh, cultivate wholesome states and for some people uh, that have maybe more of an angry character it is really beneficial to develop uh, for example loving kindness for for the restless or people that uh, have a lot of thinking going on. Uh, there is uh, the meditation using the breath as a reminder. Uh, some people with really high anxiety sometimes also find this very helpful to cut through all of it. Whereas some people um, some people are really uh, doing well with uh, other practices like the satipatthanas, the resting places of awareness. And in fact, the four resting places of awareness, the satipatthanas, I am breaking them down a little bit here in the, these four sessions, but they're not necessarily uh, completely different from one another. They are simply the common denominator in the, all four of them is right effort. is the effort of letting go, of not holding to any of that experience. Simply resting the mind onto what is happening. But to also let go and bring up joy. And that is why I read the sutta tonight. Is That is the sequence that is very important to understand to bring up joy and to let go and that is how the mind becomes collected once we understand that then we understand the practice and you can work with metta one thing that I can say though is that um, sometimes the mind because it is a bit restless it wants to change object it wants to change subject of meditation so it might be a hindrance also at a certain point if there, uh, there is so much, the mind wants to try so many kinds of meditations at the same time, then it creates confusion. Of course, when we're with the love, we're with the love. Or when, when there's compassion, we use compassion. But there are 24 hours in a day so there are many 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 situations that are going to happen and so we learn to practice with every situation that we have 
responding with wholesome uh, intention and action. That is the meditation also. I hope this answers your question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is Terry. Oh, hi, Terry. Um, can you repeat which sutta you were using? Yes, this, this is the, the nun's residence, um, the, Bikunu, the Bikunu Pasaya Sutta. Would you like to know the number? Yes, please. This is in the Connected Discourses and... Well, obviously, it will be written uh, on the talk when it will be posted. But, um, Have you translated this one? Yes, that was my translation. Oh, okay. And yeah, I'll just uh, find it on your, on your website. It's a uh, number... Yes. Can you say it slowly? Sayyutta Nikaya 5.47. SN5.47? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's in the chapter of the four resting places of awareness, the Satipatthanas, and it's number 10. Yeah, I have a question, Bhante. Yes, go ahead. Uh, um, you explained uh, two methods methods of uh, meditation in this sutta and is that transition uh, happen uh, automatically or uh, one has to make a conscious uh, change in the methods while meditating it's a bit of it's a bit of both uh, because this is explaining the transition between the first level of meditation and the second so Really, the, f the jhanas, the, the, f the levels of meditation, they are a road map that the Buddha gave us. If we use right effort, if we use wise practice, samma vayamo, we, we will go through these states naturally. But to be aware and to understand them will help us as well, to, to understand how to practice. And then there is more confidence and we understand where this is going instead of constantly wondering. So at the beginning, there will be thinking, there will be imagining. It might be that you are using this to bring up, for example, joy or an uplifting object. Because the, when the mind is uplifted and happy, it is aware. It is the natural it is the nature of a joyful mind is to be aware and not not over excited just uplifted just happy and when this happens as you continue calming down letting go whatever your object of meditation is whether you're using the loving kindness or the compassion whatever it is the satipatthanas it will calm down and the thinking and the reflection, it will naturally become too coarse for the mind. The mind will start really collect and gather here. And these thoughts and um, imagination, they will feel like restlessness a little bit more. And so naturally, that is simply your wisdom, your discernment that is getting sharper and sharper. And the mind is taking more delight, more freedom in not thinking. <laughs> so. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. Sad. Bhante, I have a quick question. Yes, um, yes. Can you please share, if you don't mind, the Pali um, terminologies for gladness and joy and what's the difference between the two? Thank yes. You. 
Yes. Well, so this is a sequence that is in fact used uh, in many ways. Um, but usually the, the Buddha would, would uh, use it uh, when he explained his, old, his whole explanation of the path. Um, he will get just before the first jhana and he will explain that. And he says, when the five hindrances has, have been left behind, when one realizes that the five hindrances have been left behind, he says, pamoja jayati. Pamoja is the word for gladness. The root is mod, like joy. But pamoja is... It can be pamoja. It can be interpreted as gladness. It could be translated as joy also, but it it is this. Um, I am sometimes translating it as relief because it is this. Um, it is this thing when when the five hindrances are left behind, they're let go of, then there is that relief, there is that pamoja. And then the, the Buddha in Pali, he says, pamuditassa uh, piti jayati. Uh, yes, I think that's what it is. Pamuditassa piti jayati, yes. And that means with that, with that gladness or with that uplifted mind or with that relieved mind, there is joy. But then we need to know the suttas very well uh, to understand that this joy that the Buddha is speaking of here is spiritual joy. It is mental development joy. This is not uh, everyday um, kind of uh, eating a chocolate bar kind of joy. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the joy of bhavana. This is the joy of mental development. Because these five hindrances, they're like the clouds over the mind. And when these are left behind is this wonderful joy of clarity, mental clarity. And I would say this is the main difference between them. If we really try to um, uh, look at them in this way. In other suttas, he will, use, uh, he will use that sequence. For example, when he talks about the six recollections of an awakened person. A person who has entered stream entry or sakadagami, once return or non-return or arahant. Uh, these four peop kinds of persons will uh, naturally uh, recollect the Buddha, the good qualities of the Buddha, and naturally their mind will be uplifted. And that's how he says then that pamoja will arise and that uh, piti jayati, that joy arises. And then, or recollecting the Dhamma, or recollecting the Sangha, Recollecting generosity, their own generosity, or whenever act of help that they've done. The virtue, recollecting virtue, or recollecting the devas. And it is also used in uh, other uh, terms, uh, but that's, uh, that's a few places where we can find that sequence. Uh, thank you, Bhante. Um, can you also help to clarify the difference between piti and sukha? Yes. Yes, piti and sukha. Piti is... Um, well, we have to... <laughs> this is a bit playing with words, but um, we... Um, <laughs> and this is Pali also. And therefore, it has a very specific context, which we 
we don't always have uh, at this time, this day and age, and with the English language, for example, it's it's a bit tricky to translate Pali word for word uh, to English. In fact, that's one of the things we realize pretty soon <laughs> is that is very difficult. Um, but I would say that generally, PT is more this this stronger kind of joy. It is a bit more excited. And sukha, sukha is more like happiness, but I would say a synonym of it would be also ease. This really nice ease. And this is also reflected in the second and the third jhana. One feels ease with the body, uh, sukha with the body. And this is not, uh, this is uh, a word that I in fact change to whenever I speak to different people, I will play with these words the, depending on where people are. But uh, I use happiness most generally because it is quite well understood. But um, further along in the meditation, it becomes quite clearer than that it is simply this really really good ease ease of body and mind so that would be more sukha Bhante, uh, generally it is, pt is translated as mental pleaser and uh, sukha as bodily pleaser in translations i have seen okay. yes well, see here the the for example in the Anapanasati Sutta, the the Buddha will explain um, the first four steps, uh, which include uh, tranquilizing the bodily formations and then knowing the whole body, and then he says, uh, breathing in and out uh, with joy. And then breathing in and out with sukha, with ease or happiness. And so if, if uh, sukha is really this um, bodily, then uh, and piti is more mental, then it would be the other way around. But, and like I said, the, the Buddha himself, uh, the, what, one thing that is happening uh, uh, quite, quite often, I would say, is that there, there some terms have become very, very rigid in, in Buddhism. And uh, when we read the original texts, the Buddha himself played a lot with these terms. And it's not that it's not true what is being said, but we should always keep an open mind as to um, uh, these, uh, how these words come and how the Buddha uses these terms. And in fact, sometimes he uses these terms as uh, something that is unwholesome and sometimes he uses them as something that is really wholesome and that that is to be developed and we have to understand what context it is being said in and uh, why is the buddha saying that and we have to know uh, the the essence the core of his teaching to understand what he means but I would say that he had quite a wide uh, spectrum of, um, of ways of interpreting words, and he even mentioned that himself. Oh. Okay. Bhante, can you please explain me what is the personal space in respect of a, a spiritual person and uh, Aryas, uh, noble people, how we have to draw a line 
I, I'm not sure I understood your question. Personal peace. Personal peace? It's a buffer zone, buffer space for the people to look after themselves. That is, I have to concentrate on my own self. How to draw that particular line? Can you please explain? Yes. Lay people and also noble people. How to draw the line where, mm. when it is uh, too much, you mean? Too much mm. going mm. out? Correct. Okay. Well, of course, of course, well, uh, there were and there still are m lay people that are Aryas and that um, it is the Buddha, like I, I say quite often, the Buddha did not only teach a, a kind of meditation, sitting meditation practice. He taught a way of life. And when we take this context, when he, when he was in northern India at that time, it was a very specific context. Bodhisattvas need a very specific environment to come down and to do their thing and to, you know, uh, take their final birth. And uh, at that time, there was very conducive uh, conditions, very conducive environment and for spiritual growth, for the spiritual practice. And... And this is, uh, this is a way of life that he was teaching to a lot of monks because at that time it was, it was normal. It was almost uh, very, fairly normal to become a monk or to dedicate their lives to, to this kind of practice. There was also countless, countless virtuous lay people and still are today that are practicing, but what it comes down to is that it is a all-the-time practice. This is a life practice. This is how to be happy. It is how to be happy and wise all the time. And to understand the Buddha's teaching is to understand all these tools that he gave and he explained how the mind works and how to develop the mind and how to develop discernment and wisdom to understand what states are wholesome and what states are unwholesome. Now, greed, anger, uh, hatred, jealousy, envy, all these things, they cause us so much suffering in the first place. They cause us so much difficulty, so much tension. Just to let them go, we can experience Nibbana and release here and now. Nibbana simply means the, the letting go of, the blowing out, the cooling down. And so, as much as we can, whether you're a lay person or a monk, it is always... See, there, there were lazy monks too, and they didn't make a lot of progress. And <laughs> there were diligent lay people who made a lot of progress. So, here, you see, it is not about... Um, well, of course, of course, if you choose to dedicate your life to it, well, that's that much more that you get. But if you do practice generosity, the mind is not clinging. The mind is always giving. The mind is, you know, it's, it's, it is liberated in the first place. When a generous mind is a liberated mind, then the virtues are strong. They're established you're protected by your own virtue and this is very uplifting for the mind then wherever you look this might not be in one or two days but when the people that have been practicing this for a long time they know the power of virtue looking back five years ago ten years ago I have not hurt consciously any living beings I have not told any lies, I have not 
committed, uh, uh, hurt anybody sexually, or I have not um, spoken in anyone's back or anything. And this is just very wonderful. And this is really uplifting. And as we practice that, as we are devoted to that, then, then we align with the Dhamma. We, we straighten our view. We straighten our view. We align with the Dhamma. And however committed we are to this is how much progress we will make. It's not... It, and that depends on you. If, if, you, if someone chooses to go to the movie theater and watch a big movie, very noisy, and eat popcorn, that's great, sure. <laughs> but if that person chooses instead to practice for two hours and to develop their mind and to sharpen their mind and to make their mind bright and beautiful, that will follow them everywhere. Uh, whatever they're going to do, then they're going to be happy. Well, this is our choice. This is, this is everyone's choice. Now, the Buddha, in so many ways, he told the disadvantages of sensual pleasures. It's not that it's... We, we do as much as we can, <laughs> and especially in the lay life, there's so many things. But it's, this is out of compassion. This is out of compassion to people. Because he was saying, be careful. This is not where the true happiness lies. This is where, the, where you will be tricked. <laughs> and when we, in, when we put our happiness into this, then we, put, we invest our happiness into something that can be taken away at any time. It is not reliable. We don't know whether causes and conditions will support that for a long time. And he always praised the advantage, the benefit of letting go of the sensual pleasures and, and, and enjoying the bliss of mental development, bhavana. And the higher mind. And now at this point, however anybody wants to uh, partake in this, that's everybody's choice. <laughs> we align with as much of the Dhamma as we can. And that's what we do. Thank you, Vante. Very good. Let us share our merits and I will let you go. Dukkha patta chani dukkha bhaya patta chani bhaya soka patta chani soka hontu sabbe pipani no idang no punyang sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhya aka satta cha bhumatta Devanaga Mahidika Punyang Tanga Numo Ditwa Chirang Rakantu Buddha Sasasanang May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana, sadhu, sadhu.